So let's welcome him up. Please welcome Graham Jerry. <laughs> Yeah, my name's Graham Jerry, I'm a property investor, I don't work, and um, deal on presenting tonight's a small lot subdivision, one lot into two. That's just a picture of the, it a, it's up in Wyndham, an old uh, two, two storey, two bedroom weatherboard house full of asbestos. That's the address of the place. And so one lot into two, we bought it with a, a DA in place, development application, development approval in place. <coughs> and that's the shape of the blocks. Um, that's the shape of the blocks, they weren't quite square, but no, it didn't matter. <coughs> Purchase, as I say, purchases with a DA in place. My slides are not as good as yours, Kate, but anyway. I had to learn PowerPoint to do this. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't, I asked my first ex-wife. <laughs> and I can't ask the second one because she's gone. <laughs> True. <laughs> so the history, a little history of it. I first saw it advertised on realestate.com. The seller had a, a call option over the uh, over the property, and um, <coughs> call option gives you the right but not the obligation to buy. Um, he was at he didn't advertise it as an option, but sort of, you know, I'd done young schools and I understood options as well, and um, I knew enough to know that his ad didn't add up to a straight sale. So it was, I asked him, he said, how the hell did you know I had an option on it? But anyway, so he was wanting $440,000 for the option. Um, he was trying to get purchase price plus his DA cost plus um, make a little bit out of it that wouldn't stack up at that. Um, it was just too much. I'd done a lot of research in Wyndham. I knew what I needed to pay to, um, you know, to be able to make anything out of it, and I just said to him, it wouldn't stack up. Uh, he gave me a copy of his option deed. Um, and I had everything. I had to, well, you can download all the applications from the council's website, which I did, so I pretty well knew it inside out. <coughs> he paid $15,000 to the owner of the property, uh, an option fee, and the property had a strike price, which is what he would have paid if he'd have gone ahead with it, 395000 and he was also paying the owner um, four hundred dollars a week on top of the fifteen thousand he paid. It's just a copy of the uh, front page of the call option deed. So <coughs> he, he paid that four hundred dollars a week for six months in addition to all his DA costs. So all up, it's costing him about thirty grand, and he stood to lose all that. I, I kept in contact with him. Um, and he was from Melbourne. He came up here thinking he knew about options, but um, he knew enough to get himself into trouble. Um, he's relying on selling a house in Melbourne to, because he intended to, to uh, settle on it and build and then sell. So he's relying on selling a, a property in Melbourne to be able to do that. He wasn't able to um, sell that property. Um, and it, as time went by, it became more obvious. I kept in contact with him. Um, that, that was the section there that, that really um, opened my eyes. It said, if the uh, buyer exercises a call option, um, the, the, the call option fee, the $15,000 he paid, became the deposit. And you'll see why that was of interest to me a little bit later. So I just kept in contact, yeah, I'm going to settle, I'm going to settle, I'm going to build, but you know, then I saw it back on uh, realestate.com. So what he was saying and what was going to happen were two different things. Um, one week prior to option expiry, because with an option, you've got an expiry, you take it out for however long you like or however long you can agree. But there comes a point where you've either got to decide to go to contract or say you're not going to go ahead with it. So I offered him $1,000 for his option because I was effectively offering $1,000 to get his $15,000, which I thought wasn't a bad deal. Um, and the solicitor I used also said, where did you find something like this? The kicker for me was, as I said, you know, if I gave him a thousand dollars, I got his fifteen thousand dollars as my deposit. And I suppose you'd say, well, um, why would I go to him and not directly to the owner? One thing that a lot of people that use options um, use as leverage with the owner to accept the option is that yeah. um, 
you say, well, look, I'm going to increase the value of your property by getting this DA approval on it. If it doesn't go ahead, you've got that, you know, you've got that approval because it stays with the property. Um, so it'll increase the value of the property. So I didn't want to take the chance of the owner perhaps knowing this and wanting more. So that is why I uh, decided to go direct to this guy, even though I could have waited till it expired and just gone direct to the owner. So it was going to expire worthless if I didn't offer him anything and he was going to lose his 30 grand anyway. So he accepted it, but it didn't happen. Like, it was a bit of argy-bargy and he thought I was going to pay him his 15 grand back on top of the thousand. So then when he found that out, he said, oh, I'll go somewhere else and get someone else and um, I've got another interested party. And then the next day he rang me back and um, accepted. In the meantime, I'd gone to the owner because I've got access to where, with RP data and that, and price finder where the owner lives. I'd already sent a taken a letter, delivered in his letterbox and said, I've been negotiating with Corey to buy this property. It doesn't look like it's going to happen. I'm interested in buying your property. You think he was interested? <laughs> I didn't hear from him until the option expired um, because it didn't go ahead because there was a real estate agent involved in the middle. That, um, I got an assignment drawn up and uh, two days before it expired, but he didn't forward it on, so it uh, fell over. and. Um, he lost all his money and I was left without, you know, without the property. But you know, a day after the auction expired, I got a phone call from the owner. So it just appraised the deal. Um, it's my company, it's a developer. I got an investor to fund the deal, who I found here. I haven't put any money into it. Well, I joke with you, know, I put a thousand bucks into it in the beginning to secure the deal. And you know, I was saying, you know, snowing money down stuff doesn't work. I've had to put a grand into it. And unbeknown to them, they said, we think we should give you $1,000 back. So you know, it cost me, you know, I put no money into it. So you know, no money down deals do work. So the strategy was to demolish the house, get rid of the old dump, finalise the DA and sell off it as vacant land. So we purchased directly from the owner. Originally he was asking 440,000, we purchased it for 387,000, it's about 50 grand less than what he originally was asking. At those prices, I knew the deal would stack up. I, you know, I knew, you know, because I'd done the research, what blocks were selling for, what, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, I knew the de demographics of the type of people who were buying in that area, and uh, there wasn't much land on the market, and that's why I chose to sell it off as land. There's only a half a dozen other blocks sort of comparable to what we had, and um, we priced it accordingly. Stamp duty was 12 grand, thereabouts. I've rounded these figures off, so if someone finds holes in them, that's why. Demolition budgeted 15 grand, but, and I learned from this, uh, um, there was asbestos in it, it was full of asbestos. I took that into account. Um, but they found asbestos in the concrete slab after and they classified that as um, hazardous material. So they slugged me another five grand for that because they had to take it to a different location. Couldn't throw it in landfill. Not next time, mate. Sewer and water design, uh, three grand. What I did there was I went to Urban Utilities because they will do a quote for design and then a quote for construction. If you go to an um, engineer, it'll cost you a lot more to get your design done. What I did, I got urban utilities to do the design. They can be also a bit more flexible, break the law a little bit, whereas an engineer can't. And then I went and got the contract that urban utilities was going to use anyway at about half the price. Civil works cost 10 grand. Originally in the DA, the previous engineer said that we'd need to go across the road for water, and that scared me because I didn't know how much that would cost. I got a bit of an idea, but I still wasn't sure. When urban utilities come out, they found water on the right side of the road just outside the fence on the footpath so saved us a bit there but I ended up spending extra on the sewer the contributions of 26 grand holding costs allowed 8 grand the total cost around $470,000 that's the old dump just before they started stripping out the asbestos it took 4 days to strip out the asbestos and a day to demolish the house that's how much asbestos was in the dump I had someone come down the road wanting to get some of the weatherboards. You know, I don't know how they thought the hell they were going to carry them off. But it had a, talking about gum tree, it had a, a, a stove and a washing machine in it. So I took them out, took them home, cleaned them up, or well, advertised them on gum tree, 
had a couple of inquiries, I thought I'd better clean them up and see if they work. Uh, so we sold them. I tried to sell the palm trees too, but no one wanted them. <laughs> they were the wrong sort of palm trees. But I had a lot of inquiries. Uh, I didn't know what brand palm tree they were anyway. I had to look it up on Google again. <laughs> so estimated sales, 280 to 290 each lot. Would have been happy at even 275 probably. Total sales, so between 560 to 580. Less GST using the margin scheme. We'll reach the GST, so we claim that back. Some people aren't aware of that, and then you end up paying a lot more in GST, so there you go, some of the corporate. So that's just one of the things we sold the blocks off ourselves. One of the things is we uh, put a, a board up on the uh, block, still getting inquiries from it. Projected profit was 70 to 90 grand. So this slide's a little bit out of date. Lot two sold at 285 and uh, we advertised, put it with three bills that did uh, house and land packages, told them how much we wanted for the block and they added that to their um, bill cost and they advertised it. So it went with three of those. So that gives you three more avenues on realestate.com and the board out the front. And we had an offer of 290000 on the lot one, which was the corner block which we didn't accept because it was subject to the sale of a million dollar property which hadn't been much demand for so wasn't going to tie ourselves up there. Just some failures and uh, getting rid of the, the remainder of it. As I say, it's the first no money down deal. Um, I learned a lot of lessons I suppose. Um, if you're going to do a, a DA subdivided block and you've got to go into the neighbours to get their, get your sewer connection, make sure you got permission off the, the neighbour first. I contacted him way before I'd even looked at, uh, when I first looked at the option to see, because the previous option holder said he had permission to go into the neighbour to get the sewer. And um, he had it in principle, but that was it. And um, you know, back and forth, back and forth, the neighbour lived, the, the uh, owner lived in Melbourne and the neighbour didn't speak much English. I actually went in there to tell him we were going to demolish the house and he thought I was going to do something to his house. And, um, <laughs> I got this shitty email from the real estate agent and the owner within no time. So it didn't get much better after that. Actually. Um, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. One other thing, I in contract, asked the owner if we could have the right to apply for power abolishment because it takes three weeks to get that. What I learned from that is just because you put it in doesn't mean that they action it. You know, I thought, no, yeah, it's been a while since I put that in. Just ring up and see because I faxed it. And when I rang them, they said, we just got the, got the fax today. I thought, oh, I don't know how fax is hanging around that long. So that, that was the first delay. Um, we're supposed to save us some time, but it didn't. Um, Sell on the land, as I said, chose to sell the land ourselves, um, put an advertising board on the property, that was uh, worthwhile, and advertised directly on realestate.com through one of those companies that will, you've got to be an agent to advertise on realestate.com, but there are companies out there that will allow you to upload your ad. The only thing is you can't have your phone number on the ad because you're not a real estate agent. But the great thing about in the back end of that um, you have your email address in there. Anyone that fills out that inquiry form, it comes directly through to you. And um, the, the odd one that sent an email through saying, can we have the address, um, just their email address. But I wouldn't give them the address without getting their phone number because I wanted to be able to follow up later. So, and as I offered actually three builders to do a house and land. We, the first block that sold, lot one, was actually through Dixon Homes as a house and land. And the second one was as an inquiry off the board. So you know, the board was worth its, uh, worth its small expense. So that's uh, thanks for the opportunity presented. A couple of other things that I uh, learned um, whilst I was still negotiating with the neighbour about um, access, the permits that had been applied for, the sewer and all, all those sort of things, and um, subject to the permission of the owner. And, negotiating with the, uh, the owner. He wanted a letter from Urban Utilities to say it was the only way that it could be done. Happy to give you access, but I want a letter from them to say it's the only way it's done. They gave me the letter, I forwarded it to him, but he wouldn't accept it. Um, 
he, and for privacy reasons, they wouldn't send it direct to him. So it just became a nightmare. Um, and I was getting a bit worried, but I didn't tell Melissa at that stage. But um, I was getting a bit worried that it might happen because there's not a damn thing I could do if he wouldn't give me permission. Anyway, eventually it happened. And um, then it sort of didn't finish there either. Uh, I had to take photos. I told him it would take a day because that's what I was told. Um, it took a day. I had to pay three grand. Well, we had to pay three grand to raise his manhole because his manhole was lower than what it should have been when that had been divided off earlier. They hadn't raised the manhole. So first day they raised that, then waited for the inspector to come and inspect that, filled it all in, and they said, now we've got to come back and reconnect his sewer because we had to go in there to get our sewer off that and reconnect his sewer off the manhole so that we could extend that sewer to the two lots which was over length, which urban utilities allowed to do for the size of that pipe. So they came back and dug it up again the next day. And um, to do that, well, it wasn't the next day, it was about two days, three days or something. So then they left the hole open and a great mound of dirt on the backyard side of another email um, saying that they'd come into my yard, made a mess without my permission. But they, I had, given, had got permission, they just didn't read their email. So. Then they filled that in. Oh, they left it. Then they had to leave it open. They came, took two days for the bloke to come and inspect that, filled it all in, put the fence back up, repaired the palings that the plumbers had broken, put new turf down, watered it all up well. A couple of days later, or a week later, I get a shitty email with photos of the backyard with the whole backyard dead. They hadn't watered it. They assured the property owner that they'd watered it, but they hadn't. So I was going back and forth every two bloody days from Ipswich to Wynnum, water this friggin' lawn. <laughs> <laughs> and I said more than that. <laughs> but guess what? I watered it and it grew. So that just proved to me they hadn't been watered. It looked horrible. It had shrunk because it was so bloody dry and it was all brown and black. And, uh, anyway. So from there, we, you know, we... Um, Went for Seal Smart, I, I used Greg for that, and um, I was told, I think I spoke with Dave, about um, stormwater that I could use to run off from the roof for stormwater. They knocked me back on that. Mm -hmm. So it pays to have good people um, around you. Now, Greg got the engineer from um, Seal Smart to come out and have a look at it, and they agreed if we gave them a drawing of a building pad showing that we'd get stormwater off the block, they'd accept that. So they've got done that, we've got Seal, uh, plain seal, just applied for the um, title, so we should have them back this week. And we we're looking at being in and out in about three and a half months. It now looks closer to five months. Uh, and you're looking somewhere between eighty to ninety thousand dollar property in that time between investor and myself. So uh, lots of uh, lessons learned, but overall, if we'd have done the DA, it would have taken us a lot longer. So uh, reasonably happy with the deal and. Uh, you know, by doing it, you learn a lot as well. So there's no money down deal. I'm overall quite happy with it. So once again, I wouldn't have been able to do this without doing young commentary. I, uh, I'd never done a, uh, a no money down deal with alone a development. So um, quite happy. So that's it. Got any questions? Happy to answer them. We'll probably take two questions. I think just to stay on time. Then I've got a question for Graham. Down the front here, Ken. Just in the Good, thanks. Here. Graham, how did you work out with your investor the proportions of the split as the deal went? The split was 50-50. I found the deal, did the work, they funded the deal. I asked, I suppose. I want you to come and water my lawn, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> Sick of water, Lord. <laughs> Anyone else want to ask Graham a question? <coughs> yep, just up the back there, Colin. There's a mic there, mate. What would you have done if the neighbour had uh, adamantly refused permission to connect services? You wouldn't like me to tell you, would you? <laughs> I have no idea. Would have been in the shit, I suppose. <laughs> Put it bluntly. <laughs> That's what was stopping us, too. <laughs> I don't know. I, there's no recourse. 
he said all along he was happy to give you permission to go into the yard, but I want it from Urban Utilities. And in the end, end, I got a phone number from someone in Urban Utilities who he rung at home one weekend to tell him, and that's the only way he accepted. He wanted copies of insurance policies, copies of the size of the machines, you name it, he wanted it. He got it too. At the end of the day, it's worked out okay. Good, good negotiation skills, I think. They're working with someone, finding out what they need, giving them what they want, um, and, and just planning a bit with them so they're in the, in the process. You nearly got what so, I wanted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, they're not, so you're not on the back foot all the time. I know if I do a deal and there's neighbours involved, that's the first thing I do is go and chat to them. Go knock on all the doors, hey guys, this is what I'm doing in the area, I'll try and bring them in on it, so you're on a good, good footing from the start. All right, uh, one more question down the front. Henry from Greg, and then we'll wrap it up. Hey, Graham, well done. Um, just curious, what's your next deal and how do you think you might approach it and uh, do you think you might take on something a bit bigger? Because the challenges might be pretty much the same. I've got, yeah, thanks, Greg. I've got another deal I'm looking at at the moment. we an option, uh, which is a splitter block in the same area um, and a joint venture with the... Um, it's a deceased estate, but that's been in progress for six months. So it'll happen when it happens. So just looking at doing a similar sort of deal again. Lots of deals out there, but they've got to stack up. Like I waited for that one, and it was worth waiting for. Um, it's like any of them. You've got to, it's got to be good money in it to, to cover, you know, um, things that may not go wrong. Yeah. I may not go right, sorry. Yeah. Good stuff, mate. Thanks, yeah. Graham. Round of applause for Graham. <laughs>